We covered an iQnix case the other week, and along with that case, iQnix sent over some of their more interesting keyboards to check out, the L80 and the A80. And after playing with both of them for a while, it got me thinking. Are 80% keyboards worth considering? Before we answer that though, I wanted to share a really interesting review that I read about the iQnix L80. Now, I'm gonna change some of the very strong language so we don't get demonetized and to protect the author, I'm not gonna say where I saw this review. So here goes. Here we go, ladies and gents. This keyboard is a straight fire emoji and they've used five fire emojis. It's lit fam, hope you're not the fire brigade. She types well for an 80% keyboard. Countries, right, I'm censoring it here. Got type C connectivity, so you know we're not living in the past. Looking at the dogs at Vermillo. <laughs> Bluetooth as well to keep your options open. Countries. Got mad adjustable angles for your ergonomic needs. It covers all your sweaty gaming positions. Poops. Got a 400 milliamp hour battery. It's like mum gave it the Milo to go, to go and go. Okay, she's, she's, she's tip top. In terms of switch options, we've got Chezzes and Gaterons. Poops even hot swappable, so if you get bored and you need to rebel against mum's imposed bedtime, you can shut up for Fortnite after 8 p.m. <laughs> Poops got dedicated function keys for all you sweaty WoW players as well. There you go, ladies and gents. Uh, I think that's everything you need to know. What more can I say? Thanks for watching, I guess. That's the best review I've ever seen. On a more serious note, I'm only covering the L80 in this video because I feel like there's enough difference between the L80 and A80 that the A80 deserves a video on its own. Right out of the gate, the design and aesthetic of this keyboard looks like it's straight from the 80s and that is a vibe I can dig. It looks so unique. And I'm sure a lot of you will agree that this keyboard is pretty striking. It kind of looks like the love child of something from Fisher Price and maybe Amiga. I don't know. Here's what you get with the L80. You get the keyboard itself. You get a combined switch and key puller. You get some keycaps for Mac users. You get a USB type A to type C cable for connecting it wired and for charging it. A wireless dongle and a little brush for cleaning the keyboard. The overall design and construction is really solid. The keyboard itself weighs around 1.5 kilos, which is pretty heavy for a keyboard. It's 130 millimeters wide, 325 millimeters long, and around 45 centimeters high with the kickstands on the lowest height. Overall, it's a pretty standard size 80% deck. The keyboard feels quite dense when you pick it up. Legit, this thing is, yeah, it's, it's super heavy. It's probably one of the heaviest keyboards that I've ever picked up. The casing is made from ABS plastic, but the top plate appears to be metal, probably aluminium. It's got hot swappable switches and it's compatible with Cherry and Gateron switches. The switches in the one that I received are Cherry Pinks and they're kind of a mix between reds and speed silvers. Here, have a listen for yourself. The cherry pinks aren't the only option here either. You can swap any switch that is compatible with the deck in yourself or choose one of the eight options from iQnix directly. The key caps and switches can be removed very easily with the included key and switch puller. So switching either the caps or switches should be a piece of cake. The included cable is a USB type A to type C cable and can be used to either charge your L80 or to use it as a wired keyboard. The USB type C port is side aligned on the left hand side if you're looking at it from the top down. There are also adjustable feet with three levels of height adjustment. You can have it all the way flat and then there's two steps. There's a power switch on the underside of the deck that allows you to turn the keyboard on to either 
be wired mode or for Bluetooth or 2.4 gigahertz wireless operation. There is a whole Bluetooth pairing thing that you can do as well, but we're not gonna cover that because it's in the manual. You have to toggle it off though, if you want it to be charged while plugged in with USB. So yeah, it would also function as a wired keyboard in that mode. The L80 has perky RGB lighting and all of that lighting can be controlled on the keyboard itself or using a combination of the function key and the keys on the right hand side of the keyboard. The keycaps on this are PBT and the font on each key is pretty good. These keycaps in particular feel quite good to type on and are relatively grippy. And I, I noticed that there was less of me mistyping things on this keyboard and that's because of these pretty grippy keycaps. I felt that because of the spacing of the keys as well and the keycaps themselves that I was actually typing a lot faster than usual and these things are just really two byproducts from two really simple things. As well as using the keyboard in its wired mode, which I already spoke about, you can use it wirelessly via Bluetooth or the included 2.4 gigahertz dongle. Now I use this keyboard in the wireless 2.4 gigahertz mode for all of my use and I only briefly plugged it in wired to charge it. I didn't try Bluetooth at all. And speaking of, it's got a 400 milliamp hour battery and should last around 200 days with Bluetooth and around 60 days with the 2.4 gigahertz wireless with about five hours of daily usage with the backlight turned off. I haven't owned it for long enough, so it's pretty hard to say if that's true, but yeah, using it with the backlight on, I'd say it's probably around a 10th of the estimated non-backlit battery life. I wanna talk about my experience using this type of keyboard for my purposes because some of you might look for the same things that I do with keyboards. Now from a content creation standpoint, which is my primary use case, the L80 is quite usable. The numpad is something that I personally use quite a bit, but again, with this type of keyboard, you're not buying it for that. You already know what you're getting yourself into. For gaming, this keyboard is, to put it simply, quite excellent. I have used this keyboard quite a bit for gaming and as I mentioned before, the spacing of the keys is really good and the fact that the function row is spaced out from the rest of the deck makes it a lot easier to press the key I'm actually supposed to be pressing when I'm playing games really poorly. So what don't I like about the L80? Well, there's nothing other than the price, which I'll come back to in a second. It's pretty rare that I don't have something bad to say about a keyboard, but there isn't anything really that I can think of that would make me not recommend this keyboard other than the price. There's two things that really make the L80 stand out to me. The first is the feel of these switches. This is the first time that I've used Cherry Pinks and I quite like these. They're a lot better than I expected. The second thing is, the design of this thing, look at it. It's so cool. It's like 80s and Fisher Price and Amiga and everything that I love from my childhood in a keyboard. Well, yeah. For the keyboard enthusiasts out there, this is probably not the keyboard for you, considering that most of you would prefer to build your own deck from scratch. I'm all about that off the shelf deck life. I don't have time to invest in either building or researching all the stuff that I need. There are just too many options. For the price it would cost to build my own, I think it would be more expensive than the L80 anyway, so it doesn't make sense to me personally. All right, ladies and gents, the meat and potatoes it is, that price. Well, the Iconix L80 at the time of filming this video starts at around 169 US dollars or around 230 Aussie dollars for the non-backlit version and around 189 USD or around 265 Aussie dollars for the RGB version. The L80 is a very expensive keyboard, but you're getting a lot of the features of a custom keyboard as well as that very unique design. Not only that, you can connect it three different ways. So I think that's where they're really trying to justify the price here because it does all of that. However, the main problem here is the price. It's really hard to swallow unless you really want something that's custom without being custom, something that's 80% and wireless. If you're not looking to build something for yourself and you want the accessibility of being able to switch the switches and having a keyboard that does everything that I mentioned, then it might be a good option. Otherwise, there are much cheaper options, but at the end of the day, it's your money and I can't force you to do anything. To answer the question at the start of the video, are 80% keyboards worth considering? Absolutely. 
I really, really like this keyboard. But the price, that's the confusing bit for me.